Hello, thanks very much for joining me again. This week's still water pattern is uh, ideal for this time of year. It's the IPN, or my variation on the IPN, if you like. So in the vise, we have a Hanak 250 barbless hook, and this one's at size 6. It's a heavy wire hook, and the thread we're going to be using today is the Vivas, it's A2, and it's the E16, which is an orange thread. First thing I'm going to do then is get plenty of wax through my thread. And I'm going to build up quite a bulk behind the bead. So I'm using my thumb and forefinger in my left hand to hold the bead in place while I get a few wraps in here. And then I'm going to come behind and this will help me later on when I come to finish the fly. So you can see I've built up a, a fair little step there to the bead. I'm going to use the uh, rat's tail just to help guide the rest of my thread down. And I'm going to bring it back to approximately where uh, a barb would be on the hook, if you're using a barbed hook. Next then, at the end, I'm going to make a small rugby ball shape because this is going to have a long marabou tail and by doing this it just helps the tail from getting tangled uh, around the bend of the hook which sometimes happens when you're fishing with uh, long marabou lures. Uh, the marabou I'm going to use is uh, from Dave Downey. It's the Sunburst collection. It's a white, white marabou and there isn't much better out there other than nature spirit stuff, uh, I don't think there's much better than this. So I've already got um, a plume out of the packet and you need quite a generous um, amount of marabou for this fly. So I'm going to take, probably, so if I use my thumb knuckle as a guide to the end of my finger, that's how much I'm taking. Strip that off the, uh, the stock and what I'm left with is this uh, waist end, which I don't really want. So off camera, I'm just going to snip that away. Then I can change it over to my left hand, quickly bring my thread up to the front, and then I can catch that in. Like so. And what I've done, if I lift up this, you can see I've just come to the, the bulk of my rugby ball I put at the end there. And there we go. Now, I, saw, I prefer it to be a bit thicker than this actually. I've probably not taken enough marabou, but I'll probably just about get away with that. So, the, um, the fritz I'm going to use today is from FNF. And this is the Hulk, and it's block 30, they call this one. It's a, it's a very long fibred fritz. Now, it's quite unruly to work with, so what I've done is I've run um, a section of this under the tap and completely soaked it. And I do this with all my fritzes. I know I've not done um, a blob pattern because, I've, well, everybody's done a blob pattern, so I've not bothered with it. Uh, but... When I'm tying blobs, I tend to soak it, the fritz. Some people prefer just to lick their thumb and forefinger and trim it back. I like to soak it. So what I've done um, while I've been blethering there is I've stripped a little bit of the um, material off the core. Just going to remove that bit there. And I'm going to catch that right in where my wing starts. I bring that up and I bring it straight up to behind the bead. Now you don't want to trap any of these long fibers. You can see it's quite a it's lovely actually. It's great material this. Lots of movement and vibrant color. So I don't want to trap any of them fibers in. So what I do is every turn I'm just going to take my time to sweep back the material. And 
just trying to get as much of it as I can to the rear so I'm not trapping any of the fibers as I'm turning the, the fritz material and it has got a tendency especially when it's wet to try and tuck itself under there and you've got to combat that by just taking your time pulling everything back Okay, probably get one more turn in here and then I'm going to have to lock it off. Just trying to find a suitable bit for my thread to come through. There we go. And I'll catch that in. Now I've locked it in with three turns there. So I can now come in with my snips and take away uh, my waste piece. I'll put that to the side because it might do for another fly. And then just stroke it all back. It's all wet at the moment, which makes it a bit easier for me to get everything out of the way. Now, the reason I'm using the Vivas is because what I want is a band of orange just in behind the and in behind the bead. I'm just going to loosen my vise up so I can see what you're seeing. Yeah. So I've got that nice band of orange in there now. And what I'm going to do is add some UV resin to my thread to finish it up. then I can put a half hitch in bring in my torch to cure it I'll just take that out of the way so it doesn't get trapped in the resin scissors to take away your thread okay now I could um, very well leave it at that but I'm going to add a little lie so I'm going to use some of the uh, trout lines resin this is the black and I'll just grab my trusty bodkin needle because I don't want too much of it nice and thick this it's, it's really easy to work with uh, because it's so thick so I'll just take a little bit I don't know if you've seen that on camera there I wasn't really paying attention so I'll loosen my vice up pull the ring back and I'm just going to tilt it onto its side and it just needs a little dot on each side requires a steady hand so once you've got the little dot on you can cure it with your UV pen same with the other side and if you're a belts and braces man you might want to add another coat of UV over the entire head. Now, I'm sure the flies you buy are great, but it's, it's the detail like this that's the difference between the flies you tie yourself and the flies you buy in the shops. So, people won't much bother with this, I wouldn't think, if you're tying lots of flies, but if you're tying for yourself as I do, 
it's these little details that just make uh, the fly last a lot longer when you're fishing with it. Uh, it gives a little bit of life to the eyes and it protects the the black bits from coming away after they've been smashed off of trees and branches if you're as bad at casting as I am. That will finish that off. So it's a little variation on the IPN. Um, really effective this time of year, as as most lures are. The fish are trying to bulk on weight for the for the winter, and this is a hearty looking meal for any trout. So there we go. My version of the IPN. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much for watching, and please don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time. So that's your first method. If you want to make them up, that's how to do it.